So the first speaker would be Dr. Sarah Lizenby from NIMH. Holly, are you with us? Yes, good morning. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about how we are approaching optimizing the spatial precision of seizure therapy, in particular using modeling of the electric field induced in the brain. Next slide. Realistic head modeling of the electric field induced in the brain by electroconvulsive therapy or ECT has taught us that ECT is not focal. Conventional ECT really is a whole brain stimulation intervention. Regardless of whether you're using uh, bilateral, bifrontal, or right unilateral electrode placements, you see in this uh, colorized plot here that almost the entire brain is being stimulated above the threshold for neuronal depolarization. Threshold here is this aqua color. The red areas are being stimulated at three times or higher above the threshold. You can draw regions of interest uh, around different parts of the brain, and you can see that on the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, we have strong electric field uh, induced in what would be a therapeutic target. But on the right, we see we also have strong field induced in what should be a non-target, the hippocampus, uh, which is related to memory. And you can see that the one line there is at or above the threshold for neural depolarization. We are concerned about this because stimulation of the hippocampus and other brain regions, which are non-targets, uh, might drive the cognitive side effects of ECT. So we'd like to make it more focal so that we could avoid the inadvertent side effects. Uh, next. We see that some experimental electrode placements can do a little bit better, like feast or frontal medial electrode placement, and I've added those onto the uh, graph on the right, but you can see they're still exposing non-targets to significant electric field strengths. Next slide. Another problem with conventional ECT is the way we individualize the dose, and this is called a dose titration procedure, where we give trains of stimuli of increasing numbers, but all of the stimuli are of a high amplitude that's really stimulating the entire brain. Next. And when we do this, we're repeatedly uh, or titanically stimulating whole brain regions with increasing frequencies and train durations. This is an issue uh, next uh, because titanic stimulation of regions of the brain, like the hippocampus, can induce and saturate long-term potentiation and also can uh, induce changes in long-term depression. And these may relate to cognitive side effects. Next. Another issue with this conventional approach to dose titration is that it fails to compensate for individual differences in the anatomy of the head, the scalp, and the, the, the skull. In this study, we parametrically modeled changes in brain volume, scalp conductivity, and skull conductivity on the x-axis. And you can see with three different types of ECT in the red lines, what impact that had on the maximum electric field induced in the brain. Next slide. And we don't account for any of that uh, with conventional ECT dosing. And here's what we get. Basically, all of these patients receive the same dose of right unilateral ECT, but their brains saw something different. And you can see that the electric field strength and distribution is quite different across all of these patients. Next. We understand that this matters because studies such as this by Z Deng showed that the strength of the electric field induced in the hippocampus on the x-axis was significantly correlated with memory loss on the y-axis. So we'd like to make it more focal to avoid this. Next. So that's the rationale for magnetic seizure therapy or MST. We basically redesigned transcranial magnetic uh, stimulation devices in order to enable them to induce seizures in uh, patients with depression under anesthesia as a way of improving the spatial focality of ECT because magnetic fields pass through the scalp and skull without impedance, giving us better control over where we're depositing the induced electric field. Next. We've seen from a series of studies that MST induces more focal electric fields compared to ECT. So MST is in the B on the far right and ECT is in A. These uh, more focal fields induce more focal seizures. I'm showing you in the center plot the power of the seizure induced by ECT in the blue bars and uh, MST in the red bars. And on the right, I'm showing you that uh, MST induces less cognitive impairment. So MST, you're showing how many minutes it takes to regain orientation right after the seizure in the hatched bars with MST and in the black bars with ECT. Next. Here I'm showing you uh, more detail about just how focal the
stimulation can be with MST on the bottom row and ECT on the top row. And you can see that we can really focus the electric field in superficial cortex. And even though these intensities are much lower than what we get with ECT, what we're showing you here is an intensity that was adequate to induce seizures reliably. Next slide. Using the um, uh, realistic head modeling, we can see that MST in the blue bar is stimulating only about 20% or less of the entire brain volume, whereas these five different types of ECT in the red bars are stimulating much larger amounts. And with the conventional uh, electric placements, which are the three on the left, it's almost 100%. Next, we can draw a region of interest around the hippocampus and see that MST in the blue who is really not stimulating the hippocampus above the threshold for neural depolarization, which is the one on the x-axis here. So it really spares these non-targets from e-field exposure, which may be relevant to cognitive side effects. Next. Now, you might be thinking, uh, MST is an elaborate device. Could you do this with an ECT device, make it more focal? The answer is yes, but you need to use the device differently. Next. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, I told you that the conventional dose titration with the ECT uses high amplitude pulses, but it doesn't have to be the, that case. You could titrate the pulse amplitude to adjust for individual differences in um, anatomy that affect the E-field. Next. And we can see when you do individual pulse amplitude titration uh, that it's like a dimmer switch on the brain. And the bottom plot is at 200 milliamps, with, even with bilateral uh, ECT electric placement. So uh, much more um, weaker fields induced in the brain and more focal compared to conventional pulse amplitudes, which is the 800 milliamps on the top. Next. And you can couple that with um, improved electrode uh, arrays, uh, taking a page from the playbook of high definition transcranial direct current stimulation. You can use multi electrode arrays for a high def version uh, of ECT. Next. Uh, in preclinical testing, we've demonstrated that we can do the use this pulse titration, which is something we call individualized low amplitude seizure therapy, and induce seizures reliably, stimulating with as low as 19 to 33% of the brain volume. So it's closer to the focality of MST. Next. And we've also shown that by doing this individual pulse amplitude titration, we significantly reduce the individual variability in dose requirement. So in the green bars are the coefficient of variation using the individualized uh, current amplitude compared to the uh, purple bars, which are the conventional approach which with, with fixed high amplitude. Next. We've also shown in our preclinical model that this individual pulse amplitude titration is a very strong way of predicting individual dose needs. On the x-axis is the motor threshold for um, inducing a, a twitch uh, in a hand muscle with individual electrical pulses, and on the y-axis is the seizure threshold. So by doing a motor threshold electrically, you can predict what the seizure threshold requirement is. Next. We've also shown in the preclinical model that the simulation of the electric field induced in the hand knob, which is on the x-axis, predicts the dose requirement for inducing seizures on the y-axis, suggesting that we might be able to use computational modeling to predict dose requirement without actually titrating seizure threshold. Next. We have a first in human trial uh, currently uh, underway in the internal research program at NIMH. Uh, next, to test out uh, this approach. And uh, we're hiring, uh, and I look forward to taking uh, your questions during the discussion period. Thank you. Oh, and next slide, I want to recognize the members of the Non-Invasive Neuromodulation Unit uh, in the Internal Research Program. And you'll be hearing in the program later today uh, from Drs. Z Deng and Lizanne Baynell. Thank you. Thank you very much, Holly. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Mm -hmm.